Hello and welcome or welcome back to the channel. Before we get into the video, I would like to take this opportunity to thank my channel members for their ongoing support. If you would like your name to appear on screen, then you can click on the membership link that will be in the description down below. I have two tiers, one for shout outs and a second tier where you will get weekly members only content. This content will be catch up live streams, members only reactions, or sometimes I will do a pre recorded chatty get ready with me video where I update you on life stuffs. There is also, of course, the custom emojis and the cute animal badges next to your name. Of course, you just watching this video is already much appreciated, but if you wish to support the channel further, you can do so by subscribing, commenting, liking, sending super thanks, and of course, joining the membership. And now let's get into the video. Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ilona. I'm also known as Shikara Transformations. I'm an online health and fitness coach and I'm also a bodybuilder. If you're curious to see what my bodybuilding journey to the stage is like, then be sure to check out my dedicated vlog series. And if you're ever interested in purchasing an eight week training plan with nutritional guidance and a welcome pack that has information in it, then also email me on the email that is in the description down below. I have made various training plans for an eight week period for different levels of experience. Um, one to one coaching, inquire. At the moment, I am at capacity, but people come and go. So email me if I have spaces, I'll let you know. Anyway, today we're going to be looking at some. Tammy Eleven, and uh, we're going to be looking at her struggles with a binge eating full cycle. Apparently, it's uh, the worst, most difficult, difficult video she ever made. Um, I, I feel like Tammy is becoming a little bit of a merry-go-round, just like so unfortunately some of the other girls we're looking at. I like Tammy. Obviously, I always feel incredibly nostalgic when I watch her because I am Dutch myself, and it reminds me of just things in Holland, you know. Uh, but in terms of her and her progress, she's been in therapy for a very long time. She's had a team of people working with her. And I'm not too sure what it is that she's expecting them to fix for her. Um, maybe she just hasn't had a good therapist, possible. Maybe it's because of the fact that she's potentially uh, on the spectrum. And that therefore the, she needs a different type of therapy. Come on in. That's also possible. Um, or maybe it's just a case of, you know, somebody that is just not willing to put in the work. And that wants to have a magic pill. Because, you know, we do see when she binges, she does, she does often purchase binge foods. She often, when she, you know, she does the intuitive eating, it's like, yeah, you should indulge, you should allow yourself to eat the things you want to eat somewhat, but that doesn't mean you have to buy it all and have it all in your house at all the time. It's like, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it is supposed to be like that. But um, anyway, let's get into this video, see what she has to say, and I guess we'll go from there. Hello, Lemfem. So today's video is going to be a serious one. So before watching the video, I advise you to just pause the video and consider, like, are you in the right mental space right now to watch a video about binge eating? If you struggle with binge eating or with restricting, then this video might be triggering for you. And if so, I understand and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. If not, let's get into it. But aren't literally all her videos about binge eating. Literally every single video she does is about her binging and kind of that she's struggling with it or that she gave into it or that's her entire channel so as i mentioned in my previous video this entire month has been pretty much a hell in terms of binging and i want to take you lemons through my whole binge cycle this binge cycle it lasted 24 days which is a pretty long one for what i'm used to and i wanted to first 24 days that's a lot um I also feel like just because she's on, like, the thing is as well, it's like, yeah, it's great that she's honest and that she's able to share the insights and, sh you know, like, I find that that's thing that I do find that very interesting because obviously, like, I don't, I have had eating disorders in terms of binging and purging, but I never ate to her extent and I've never been morbidly obese. I've been what I would call, like, European fat, 
over a decade ago, which is, if you're European, you know exactly what I mean. The, the obesity standards have shifted significantly in the last sort of 10, 15 years. So what was considered big? I mean, I wasn't even obese, but, you know, besides that point. So obviously I can't relate. So it is interesting to see, but I also feel like just because somebody's honest about it, but then if they keep doing the same thing and not really trying to change or stopping it, then it's kind of like, yeah, okay, you're being honest and you're sharing the insides of it. And that's interesting, but what are you doing about it to stop it from happening? First of all, explain a little bit more about what is a binge cycle for me. A binge cycle for me is the entire cycle of first having a binge and then the aftermath of the binge up until the moment that I like accept like, okay, this is something that happened. And until the moment that I am like, okay, I'm I love my cat, but oh, me, oh my, do you, if you have pets, are your pets shedding at the moment? Because I swear that hair is always a problem, especially little cat hairs, but at the moment, oh, the hairs go everywhere from all the animals. I'm brushing the dog several times a day and it's just balls come out. I'm over it. Like, I feel as if I'm over this binge and the whole, you know, all, everything around it. So normally a binge cycle starts with a binge and this can be a small binge, it can be like a large binge, a huge binge, it doesn't really matter. As long as I am not able to deal with the binge in like, you know, in that moment and maybe like the next day, if I'm not able to just accept it and I keep on thinking about it and changing my future behavior like of the, the following days based on that binge, then that is like still part of the binge cycle. When I don't and when I just have a binge, well, that is what makes a binge a binge, isn't it? I know that Amber is trying to justify that a binge has to be like three times the quantities or it needs to be this. From in my experience, from when I was eating disordered, a binge for me would be, it could be anything. But it, what basically meant if I felt bad about eating the food that I ate, if I felt like I shouldn't have eaten it, I got guilt and then I took measures to rectify eating that food. So a binge doesn't, it doesn't have to be thousands of calories. It can be, of course, it can be, but it, it doesn't have to be. It's how you feel afterwards. It's the mental side of it, in my opinion. Binge, I accept it, and the next day I am back to, you know, my normal eating. That binge cycle was just like one binge, and that was it. However, unfortunately, most of the time, a binge cycle lasts longer than just one binge. And like I said, a binge cycle, it can start with a binge. Sometimes it can even start with an overeating episode. Because if I overeat, like with the binging, if I do not or am not able to accept, like, okay, so I have overeaten, it happens, you know, let's just get right back on the horse and let's get back to, like, a normal way of eating. If that's something that I'm not able to, then most of the time I will have a binge, and that's where the official, like, binge cycle starts so eating too much food that's pretty much where it starts and i have explained this in a previous video but a bitch for me what's the most so she's saying she's doing this for 24 days this is four days ago let's have a look at her channel the here she says six days ago that she was on the verge of a relapse um and that she's getting doctor's help opening up so during all these videos here she well this sort of the, the last three rows apparently she was experiencing a binge or she was in a binge cycle but she didn't say that about that in her videos, did she? Most important uh, feature of a binge, like what makes a binge a binge. For me, it's not that much about how much do I eat in the moment, how much calories do I consume. For me, what really makes a binge is the mental state in where I'm at in that moment. So when you have a binge, your mental frame is like the same. I would describe it the same as someone who is addicted to a certain drug or food or whatever. In the moment where you have a binge, you have this strong urge of I have to have that food i have to have my drug i do will say i feel like she's looking nice today i don't know if it's because she's got makeup on or if she styled her hair she's got some earrings in which she never does but she's looking nice she's looking more put together more, more put together than normal let's put it like that and I, I don't know if that is just it just looks like that but i think she's done something with her hair she's got some earrings on yeah she's just looking she's looking nice today and that feeling is so strong that most of the time it seems as if you are not in control in that moment and you just the the the, the urge that you have is almost like it it's something that happens to you as if you're not in control of yourself and there is of course a moment where you just like snap out of it and you gain back the control i myself as far as i can remember i only have been able to stop like the process of a binge a few times and most of the time that's because i got cold or because someone rang my doorbell um so most of the time that wasn't even me doing it but it was like a factor of like the outside coming into my little like binge world at yeah so from my personal experience <clears throat> what i remember it is it is like that once you get started or you kind of 
that trigger goes it is really hard to stop and it's really hard to snap out of it so it, for me it's just a case of i have to really distract myself and just write out the thoughts of the urges and like i'm not gonna sit here and pretend i don't get them still like yeah i do especially now that i'm prepping like sometimes it is harder sometimes it is nice to just think like oh i can eat some food and just do something stupid to you know get rid of it because like this is something i did for almost like 15 years of my life so it's um it's just a case of learning to recognize thoughts for being thoughts and not giving in to them and that's like easier said than done and it's very difficult to sit that out sometimes but that is like kind of what it is um you know people probably give you different i suppose therapists will give you different coping mechanisms different ways to deal with it but for me it's just a case of keeping busy so if i ever get to a point where i'm like really hungry and i'm not supposed to eat or i get an urge to eat something that i shouldn't um for example for example if i'm walking the dogs and i'm like oh, i really want to have bonita what i'll do is i'll walk a different way so i'm not walking past any bonita shops in the mornings um another thing could be that if i feel like i want to eat something that i shouldn't i'll just go and clean or i'll just go i'll just do something keep myself busy just to distract no kitty you're not going there to ah fuck she just scratched me by accident um i'll just do something to distract me um and then eventually that thought that that uh, that um that impulse will come and go that time so having a binge is really intense and the cycle most often starts with a binge as i said before when i have a binge and i'm able to just accept it and get back on the horse like the very next day that is something that i'm trying to achieve here i am not trying to not binge at all at least not in this moment because i don't think that it's something that i should try because i have tried it and it only makes me more upset and angry with myself every time i do binge what i am trying now is to get back on the horse as quick as possible and last month it really really it was really bad it did not work out that way and that's something that i want to show you the moment where my binge cycles end is where i'm finally able to accept like okay this happened, I do accept it now when I uh, stop restricting because lately I also started restricting really bad as you will see in the video and you know restricting it only makes you binge harder and, and more hungry and so you know it's it's just a really toxic negative cycle like a downward spiral of a lot of things but that's what I see as a and yeah it is like that like sometimes obviously I, I coach people I do YouTube but I also do coaching um so I, I deal with people that have binge eating disorders and one of the biggest things to f help fix that is to get them to eat properly and get them to eat whole foods. I don't stick people on harsh deficits. In fact, most people when they become clients of mine are surprised by the amount of food they're eating. Additionally, um, it is also a case of teaching them that if some people will be like, oh well, you know, I've got this event coming up so I'm restricting here or like, you know, I overate this day so I'm restricting now. And it's my job as a coach to go like, no, stop doing that. Just get back on your calories. Whatever gain has happened is just excess carbs, excess sodium. It will regulate in a few days. But don't fall into a cycle of overeating, undereating, overeating, undereating. Because you will never get rid of it. You will just be stuck in it forever. So if you fucked up, all you can do is just get back to where you were. Recalibrate. Just all you can do when you fuck up is just recalibrate get back to where you were and start again and keep going um, and break literally break the cycle which is again easier said than done but that is that is just what you have to do binge cycle now let's get into the video and it all started in march like the end of march i think 28 like on the top of my head so let's get into it and um yeah that's it so this whole binge cycle it started on march 29th i bought all of this stuff and i almost ate every single item that i am showing right here so this was quite a big one for what i'm used to everything that i ate came together to i can just never get over how much sweet stuff she eats like maybe it's because i don't have a big sweet tooth don't get me wrong i'll eat some apple pie great the drop i'll eat some oh, the drop yes i'll eat some drop yes i like my i like myself a cookie i like myself a chocolate i like all of that but the especially the choco sushis which are like uh shoe puffs and she's got some other pastry with cream and the ice cream it's all so heavy because of the cream, because of the like, it's the sugars and the fats. So I just, like, I just can't imagine sitting there and eating all of this because I would literally feel sick. 
just because of the the sugar and the just the, how heavy the food is with also with all the fats in it so for me it's also kind of weird that she's sitting there and filming this so it's kind of like she knows she's this is also I, it's interesting to see but at the same time it's kind of weird it's not, so you're literally filming what you're about to binge on even though it's supposed to be like uh, you're in an in, in, in the moment situation where you can't control yourself but I just I guess she does do this over a whole day she has to do it it's not in one sitting but still like I couldn't I would I would have to break this up with something savory like I could yeah I could just couldn't imagine seeing there eating just like sweet things in such large volumes 12,000 calories which is <laughs> holy shit 12,000 They say an average woman should eat around 2,000 calories a day. That's six days worth of eating for the average female. Shall we just put this into a perspective of how much chicken and rice this is? Hold on. Let's say for a portion of chicken and rice, 200 grams of chicken, 200 grams of rice, that's, that's, a, that's a big portion. That's, that's a decent amount of protein and fat. That's a decent amount of protein and carbs. It's around 480 calories. So, divided by 500, you could have 24 portions of chicken and rice for 12,000 calories. 24. Now, if you divide that, that's almost five days worth of eating. If you ate five times a day. 24 days worth of eating chicken. That's 24 portions of chicken and rice. 200 grams of chicken and rice. That's 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 a big portion, guys. Trust me. That's that's a lot of chicken. 200 grams. It's a lot. There were some leftovers. The thing I did not eat were most of the Easter eggs and some licorice. The f she ate the majority of that bag of licorice, though. That's like, I'm gonna say that's like. Oh. Is it's a lot. There were some leftovers. The thing I did not. She probably ate at least two thirds of that bag i would say eat were most of the easter eggs and some licorice the following day i ate some chicken some chicken lunch meat with some cottage cheese and some bell pepper and some tea and that was it for the day the yeah i'm not surprised i'm really not surprised like i don't even think that this is intentionally restricting if you eat twelve thousand freaking calories you're not going to be hungry the next day if I have a really big meal, if I, especially if I eat late at night, if I have, uh, uh, if I go out for dinner and I don't eat until like nine, ten o'clock, which is late for me because I eat my last meal at seven normally, I'm not hungry when I wake up first thing in the morning. I never really am anyway. Sometimes I am. It depends on like if I have a low calorie day or not. Point is, is that if you eat twelve thousand fucking calories, which is basically like six days worth of food, yeah you're not going to be hungry the next day are you so like it's not even about necessarily restricting it's just like i just don't see how your stomach and your intestines physically have space for more food because there's no way you've digested that amount of food unless like she's got like uncontrollable bowel issues and whatever comes in just comes out straight away so to make space but if you have just like a normal digestion it what it takes what 24 to 48 hours for something to digest and pass so yeah I'm not surprised you're not hungry and not eating much the next day. And that's not even about restricting. That's just logical. You've just eaten six days worth of food in one day. Or calories. It's not food. It's calories. Then the day after that, I tried to up it a little bit with eating two meals instead of just one. For my first meal, I had some scrambled up egg and... Why is there like no vegetables? She eats really little vegetables actually. She could do with like incorporating a bit more greens in general. Like, I don't mean as in like green green leaves. I mean those are they're fine as well. I just mean like literally vegetables. More just it's just either carbs or just lunch meats and sometimes a chicken breast. I mean eggs are fine, don't get me wrong, like I like eggs, but maybe she could turn this into like an omelette with um some spinach some bell pepper, some onion, maybe have some egg whites, have some whole egg, cut up some of that lunch meat. Uh, like in, in all in all, it's not necessarily a bad meal, but it's just kind of like what she eats all the time. You know, there's like, it's okay for a quick snack, but she should be trying to improve her eating habits. Part of that is also incorporating just more whole food and just more nutrients.
and vegetables have nutrients in them. And again, some chicken, lunch meat with some cottage cheese and some bell pepper and some tea. And then as my second meal, I ate some veggies, some chicken and... You see, this is not bad. This is good. I had a glass of Sugar Zero Fanta. Then on day four, I started my day with some quark. Then for my second meal, I had some cottage cheese with some chicken. See again, no vegetables. Like, there's nothing wrong with having something like this as a snack on the go if you're busy. But she's not busy, she doesn't work, she doesn't do anything all that long. Which is probably part of the reason why she's binging all that as well, because she doesn't do anything all that long. But, you know, maybe, like, make yourself a big salad, keep yourself busy. Like, try out different, like, vegetable recipes. Chicken. And for dinner I had some chicken and veggies. See, this looks a lot better again. At least there's some green in there. But I don't know about the sauces she's used, could be high in fat. So, no carbs, just veggies and chicken. And, of course, lots and lots of white. Yeah, that's like, again... No, no carbs. It's like, well, you did eat probably, what, like, a thousand grams? Yeah, probably actually like a thousand grams, to be honest. Yeah, probably, probably around a thousand grams of carbs is what she ate a few days before. So, yeah, there's no need for you to eat many more carbs. I also wonder what her water intake's doing. Like, tea is all great and stuff like that, but how much is this, like, um, like the, the Lipton iced teas? Or is this tea she's making herself? Does it have sugar in it? Does it not? Because, like, tea is good. I like tea, I drink tea, but just make sure you get your water in as well, especially after a binge. Make sure that everything is digesting properly. Water and tea. Then in the evening, I had a smaller binge. So this binge came to 3,300 calories, give or take. I ate the leftovers of my huge binge, so the chocolate Easter eggs and some licorice. And I also ate this chocolate egg with some chocolates inside. The next day, I was angry at myself again for binging. And so for breakfast, I had some zero sugar Fanta. And in the Who has Fanta for breakfast? I find this really fucking weird. If you have fizzy drinks, pop for breakfast, I don't understand it. Like, I literally find, even like, if, even, even though it's not alcohol, drinking something like Coke before lunchtime, I find that really weird. I don't, I don't get behind that. The last thing I want to do when I wake up is drink Coke or like a Red Bull or something like that. Ugh. Evening, I was really, really hungry and I ended up eating some uh, chicken lunch meat. I ate about half, I Think of this packet. I ate some cucumber and I also had some pineapple. Then on day number six, I had my breakfast shake in the morning. And this is something that I'm pretty happy with because I started eating my breakfast shakes again, which is something that really helped. You can tell she's looking really swollen, like her 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 hands just look really inflamed. Meat during, you know, after a binge and just in general. Then I filmed a taste test and I had half of this bottle of Calypso stuff and half of this Laffy Taffy. It's a Sugar is sugar. Piece of candy. In the evening, I ate a full meal with chicken, veggies, and some pasta. And then as a snack in the evening, I had some more of like the chicken lunch meat. So I ended up eating the whole packet over like this day and the previous one. On day number seven, I again started with my breakfast shake, which I, like I said before, is a good thing. And then for my second meal, dinner, I... I mean, this is not bad. Just the amount of potato is enormous. And again, no vegetables. I mean, maybe there's some vegetables through there. Maybe some endive or endives. I had some chicken chicory. and some mashed potato with some chai cream. Then on day eight, so yeah, she put some chicory through there. It has been a week now. I started to eat three meals, so that was something that I also was happy about. For breakfast, I had my breakfast shake. For lunch, I had some quark or yogurt. I don't know what kind it is. And then in the evening, I had my leftover mashed potatoes with a piece of fish. On the ninth day, I again start fried fish. Why not? Like if you can get the fish for this from the freezer, or or that you're gonna oven bake you can get them without like this is choices she makes right you can in holland there is options there's a lot of options where you go to supermarket you're like especially because she shops it over time when i was there last i was amazed by how many salads how many pre-cooked foods like there's a lot of choices to eat healthy if you if you go to over time yeah it's pricey but she's spending fucking loads of money anyway so what difference does it make if you go to the freezer section you can either choose the fish fingers or you probably can get like actual fish fillets um, that have been marinated and all you have to do, they already come in a baking tray and all you have to do is stick it in the oven. Now, if you're going to go for an oven option, why do you have to choose the breaded one over the non-breaded one? And it's it's not, a, it's not a money thing. We can't pretend that the cost is an issue because she doesn't care about that. She's quite happy to spend clearly a lot of money on her binges like ben and jerry's isn't cheap i i imagine you could probably get some fish for ben and jerry's if not maybe two like two portions of fish so again that's choices she's making and she's always opting for like the unhealthier option even though like having a, a pre-marinated seasoned fish frozen or a breaded fish is going to take the same time in the oven 
I don't get it. Started with my breakfast shake, then I had 30 grams of nuts, so just, you know, this mix of nuts, different kinds. And then for my second meal, I had some rice, some chicken, and some veggies. And then on day number 10, I started again with my breakfast shake, and I finally started eating some bread again. I had two slices of bread with some avocado, some cheese, an egg, just a really good... So this looks good. Like, I like this. It's got whole, whole grain bread, veggies inside, there's, there's greens inside, there is... Uh, Avocados for healthy fats. The only thing they could do with is some actual protein. I think there's maybe some protein, some cheese maybe, or some lunch meat. Lunch. In the evening, I was struggling with making dinner for myself, so I ended up eating one of my ABMs, my after binge meals, that I meal prep exactly for this purpose. And so I had some mashed potato with some spinach, some chicken, and some gravy. And that was it for day number 10. Day no Again, it's not bad, an enormous portion, but I'd rather she would eat a big portion of like two chicken breasts with mashed potatoes and spinach I'd rather she would eat seven, eight hundred calories of that than and being full up and being satiated, then go off and binge like a thousand calories worth of chocolate. Number 11. So for breakfast, my breakfast shake, you guessed it. Then for lunch, some scrambled up eggs. This night, I planned on making some brownies. I was going over somewhere and I wanted to take something with me. I was in a hurry and so for dinner, I ate one of my other ABMs. This one was some rice, some minced meat and some veggies. Then in the evening, I went over to my niece and nephew to play some Dungeons and Dragons. I had some little meat buns, I had two pieces of my homemade brownie and I had some chocolate eggs. When I came home, I went to bed but in the middle... That brownie does look good though. <laughs> middle of the night, I binged on the homemade brownies. So I made a big batch of brownies. I took half of it over to my niece and nephew and the other half, I was planning to store them in the freezer. How so this is another thing. If you're gonna, because I can't be trusted with stuff like that. I'll be honest, if I made brownies like that, for, say for example, I was to make that for my boyfriend. There's no way that I'm gonna keep some brownies for a later date. If that's around and ready to eat for me to eat, I'm gonna eat it. I don't have that kind of willpower. I just don't buy the things that I know that trigger me or that I feel like eating because if it's there, I eat it. So if she knows that she's going to be eating on those brownies because she has no willpower, then just give them all away to friends and family. Like, just don't just don't keep it around. Like, why, why keep it around? You know you're going to binge on it. Like, it's okay. Like, to resist a delicious looking brownie like that is very difficult, even for those with the most amount of willpower there is. So why have it around? Why, like, why even have it around? Just don't, like, it's, I fully expect that she would do that. Because they're brownies, they're nice. However, I did not do that and I ended up binging on those brownies. So in terms of quantity, this is about how much brownies I ate. I ate 2,100 calories, which is not a lot for what I'm used to, but the mindset is what determines if something is a binge or not a binge for me. And this was a binge, it was a smaller one, but it still was a binge. That then the next day I recorded this following clip. So I am struggling a lot with filming, but I do want to film it because I do think this is so important. But I think this is one of like the most difficult things that I have filmed. I really hope that I'm able to put up this video, like the after binge video. I, I don't know. I know how stupid and how easy it might seem from the outside to say like, yeah, duh, you had a binge because you were restricting. Just stop the freaking restricting. I do see all of that. And today, I don't want to film my face, I don't want to film myself. Um, I am just very mad at myself, so yeah. So this is my first meal, it is about 5 p.m. This is my breakfast shake. I, I, I really, I know that she really likes these breakfast shakes, I don't. <laughs> I think a breakfast shake is just kind of a waste of calories. Like, yeah, I know she put some protein through there and all of that. I just feel like she would get a lot more out of it if she ate some real freaking food. For the same amount of calories, that's going to be a lot more satiating. She could probably have like a slice of toast with some eggs or with some avocado, whatever, and be a lot more satiated than what she's going to be. Hey, rooters! Than what she's going to be from a shake. I can guarantee that because shakes are just not very filling. Are they? No, they're not very filling. They're not very filling. No. I have recalculated all my calories and for today I can have uh, 1000 calories. So this is part of it and I am also watching the series You. This is the last season that I'm watching. I'm also planning on doing some things to take my mind off because I don't want to lay in bed all day. Because it is Sunday, it's weekend and you know, tomorrow it's work again and so I... Oh, she does work. Want to lay in bed all day because it is Sunday, it's weekend and you know, tomorrow it's work again and so I am trying to make most of my day, but I am... Oh, she does work. I did. I thought she didn't work. Is that new?
honestly having a lot of trouble with that because of yesterday. I'm just very disappointed in myself at this point. So that 11th day, I started my day with a breakfast shake, as you just saw. Then for my second meal, I had some meat and some veggies. And then for my third meal, it's not really a meal. I mean, she does know how to cook. Like, that looked nice. To me, this looks tasty. Look at that. Look at that. That looks delicious. I want to eat that. Some meat and some veggies. And then for my third meal, it's not really a meal. I had a glass of orange juice. Yeah, because that's... She needs to stop with all the juices and drinking her calories because it's just not good. It's just spiking her insulin levels. It's just, it's not filling her up. There's no fiber. There's nothing in it. It's literally just sugar. So just stop drinking. Your, I think if she was to just stop drinking her calories, that would be a huge progress. That would be a huge step in the right, right direction. On day number 12, I started out with a breakfast shake and then for my second meal, I had some corn and an egg. I also found some cheese that I wanted to use up, so I added it to my egg and I also had some pineapple. Then later that day, I binged again. This is a clip that I recorded the day after. So yesterday I was planning on eating some broccoli, I didn't. And I ended up ordering, I ended up not feeling good enough to show you guys, I was just... I don't know, sometimes I don't succeed in filming it and it is a shame because I am showing you everything that I have eaten the past few weeks since like the huge huge binge and I didn't do it. The only thing that I can show you is like the remainders. Uh, so yeah, uh, I still, I am not having a good day. I feel super shitty, not only because of the binge, that was my get. I slept horribly and ever- I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised she sleeps bad eating like that. That makes perfect sense. Since I quit therapy over, you know, the place where I had therapy, I have a lot of trouble with the self-hate. There's a lot of self-hate. I think that's also like a huge part why I'm struggling this hard with the restricting after that binge that happened like two weeks ago, maybe even over two weeks ago, you know? It has been a long time and I'm still restricting and I'm still struggling because of that one binge that I had back then. I also like, I visited some friends, like some, some people from my- But I thought she had a dietitian. Does she not work with a nutritionist or a dietitian? Do they not give you meal plans? Maybe that's what she should look for. It's just somebody to give her a meal plan with some variety, but that she knows what to look for, the quantities to eat, what to fall back on. My old class, and that also brought up a lot of memories. I have had a lot of dreams specifically bound to, you know, things that happened when I was younger. A lot of stuff to do with my parents and with my family and all kinds of stuff. And um, today I just, I, I'm missing a parent. I'm just, you know, it's hard to explain. I just miss something that I've never experienced, that I've never had, but that my heart is longing for at the moment. It's always longing for that thing, it's always trying to fill that empty void. Um, and I'm just, you know, I'm just grieving a little bit today, I think. So what I ate yesterday, I will do like a quick summary of it. I ended up eating the other half of like the Leffy Teffy. I also had another American candy called Airheads. I don't know, it's like orange flavored. Then also I had this bag of chips. This has been in my house for like, I don't know, maybe October last year, like for a long time. Then I ate like a fry, some fries in a, in a thing with some sauce. I ate uh, some snacks with it and I had an ice cream with it. And I also ended up making some chocolate milk with some cocoa powder and some milk. And that was everything that I ended up eating yesterday evening and it all came to like 3,700 calories give or take. I'm just mad at myself. I'm disappointed in myself. I am just like, okay, you know, today I, I won't eat anything. And I'm just, I'm just angry. Like I said in the clip, I was very, very angry with myself. I ended up eating nothing that... Yeah, I like... I'm kind of in two minds about it because like it's the thing is the deed is done so there's no point to be angry about it but at the same time you know you're I think having some sort of um, ex not acceptance but some sort of how, how do I put this to she should be angry with herself because she fucked up right at the end of the day so it's not a bad thing to be angry with yourself but it's also you shouldn't continue sabotaging yourself. You should go like, okay, I fucked up. Let's acknowledge that and move on and rectify it. Hello. Yeah, we'll go soon, baby. That day, only just water and tea. The next day, of course, I had another, you guessed it, a binge. This one was a bigger one. It was about 5,200 calories. I ate some croissants, some stroke waffles, which are like Dutch cookies, some of the kinder stuff that's laying over there, and some, um, it's not really whipped cream. It's something that resembles it, but it's different. And I just ate that as is. I did not eat it with the cookies or whatever. I just ate it as is. Then for the next few days, instead of heavily restricting, I still chose to restrict, but not as heavy as before. And most important, I think, I kept on eating three meals a day. So I tried to not skip any meals. And that's where I ended the footage, because I thought like I mean like she says she's restricting but these calories it's not like these just look like normal portions of food to me though you know it's not like she's sitting there having just like an apple with a carrot she's having like proper meals she's still eating like 15 to 1800 calories I'm guessing 
which is like technically she could lose weight eating a lot more but like 15 to 1800 calories for a woman that's not very active it's not an awful lot and like i know she's a she's a bigger woman she's tall so she can eat more but she's not going to be starving at that little she'll be a f she'll be fine it's not like she's eating like 500 or 800 calories so yeah it's 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 somewhat restricting but i feel like she's making it sound like she is um eating an apple a day <laughs> but she's eating she's eating maybe like 1500 calories and that's okay you know like it's not ideal she could do with eating more but it's not the end of the world this is the end like the binge cycle is over but it wasn't so i don't have a lot of footage but in the end like uh five days after this last clip i had another enormous binge twelve thousand calories the things i ate i ordered them online so i do know what i ate so here is an overview of that and rosanabola sushis deep freeze croissants again the fucking ben and jerry's i was just seething angry because i was like i almost chips sour cream chips cookies jesus christ hey, but those mona cookies are delicious though <laughs> oh bitter cookies oh those mona desserts they are delicious but obviously it's just like a dessert in it so it's worked away the debt of calories that i build up since like the march 29th and i was almost out of it and then i had this other huge binge and i was like i have been stressing for over three weeks if i had that binge like march 29th and i just kept it at that and i just would eat normal then i would not have had all this stress that i have had over the past few weeks trying to undo what i did and i think that was a little bit of an eye-opener of like i don't want to do this again come on so I, I don't understand this either so like what's the point of writing it all down and coloring it and making it look pretty I like understand writing it down, but what is she learning from this? She's not making any changes, so like, what's the point? Just to look back on it, but she knows why she's binging. She knows what was a binge. She knows how many calories she's had. So, I don't know. So after this huge binge, I struggled for another three days, but then I finally got out of this binge cycle. It is now one week later. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm still on track with my food, but this was a huge binge cycle. Hey LMFM, so I just showed you the entire binge cycle from the beginning till the end. I think what's most important about this cycle. Please take my footage and my mistakes, my faults, learn from them if you can. Like if you are at the moment struggling with restricting or binging oh, or whatever, what I think the most important message that I can oh, give you is fuck. instead of being angry Wait. with yourself and hating yourself for it, try to just accept it because if you try to continue to restrict, I, I know how toxic the mind frame can be because in the end it does work. Like if you have a binge and you eat like 10,000 calories and you work them off, like it is able, you're able to do it. However, in the long run, like even if you're able to do it without like making yourself more hungry, binging later on, even if you would see it as like, okay, I successfully worked off 10,000 calories that I binged on before. In do you know how hard you have to work to work off 10,000 calories? You don't do that over a couple of days. That is like 10,000 calories. That's like two or three weeks worth of training. It's really hard to burn calories. <laughs> I know that your, your watch will tell you one thing or your treadmill will tell you one thing. I can assure you to burn like 500 calories in a workout is a really intense workout. An intensity that a lot of people don't do. So yeah, I wouldn't rely on that. In the end, you're not a step closer to healing your relationship with food. You are a step further away from that goal. And so it might seem beneficial in the, in the, in the short term, but in the long term, you are moving away from the bigger picture, the bigger goal of like healing your relationship with food because losing weight and healing your relationship with food are two entire different things. And I know because I have lost weight on one point up until I was 19 kilos or no, 19, that's a little bit, that's, that's not that much. 90 kilos, which is, I don't know, like maybe 190 pounds, maybe 200. But in that moment, I felt just as bad as I felt before at the 300 pounds or the 350 pounds, which was in that time my highest weight and you know it's so important to not only lose weight but if you have and if you struggle with a, a, an eating disorder to really heal that relationship with food in the long term instead of just losing weight so yeah but you also need to try and improve what you're eating though like you can't just sit there and just eat like you need to prioritize eating good like i don't feel like she does that like she does sometimes and she makes somewhat decent food choices but a lot of the time she doesn't and that's kind of like part of the problem as well, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's that's what I really wanted to get off my chest. So please, if you are struggling with it, learn from the mistakes that I made in this video. Also to have a little bit of comparison material. So I started losing weight or I started to lose weight again because you know, I have lost big chunks of weight multiple times. Um, I started losing weight again in um, August of last year, 2022. And in general, I have about three or four binges a month. And if you compare it to this last month, I have had, I think eight, let me check. Yeah, so I had seven binges, two really massive ones, and also two uh, overeating episodes. And that's a lot. Like, that's that's a lot if you compare it to, like, the previous months. When I gained a lot of weight, because before starting to lose this weight, I also gained a shit ton of weight, I 
pinched maybe like three four times a week so that would be like 16 times a month so it's still better than it used to be but still for me this was really really tough this was really hard i just hope that i was able to learn from this experience and hope that i'm going to do it better but i don't know i don't know how she can't learn from it she's writing everything down right this is like she's done this many times so uh, like i don't know like this is something i don't get like i understand it's a cycle obviously and a cycle needs to be broken but she she knows what she did she knows what she needs to do to better it so what else is there to be learned you know you know it makes you feel shitty you're documenting everything you've been doing it for some time now so i don't really feel like what else that, that she can do better next time the most important thing that pulled me out of this binge cycle was that in one moment i was so focused on restricting and burning off all the calories that i ate that in my phone because i like how she doesn't exercise though by just restricting through not eating i had to do things in my phone in my uh, agenda i had these calculations of like okay so if i eat 500 calories today that means that i will be able to burn so and so much calories and i would just do that for like two weeks in advance at one point and i would get so overwhelmed and part of the toxic relationship that a lot of people have that struggle with binge eating disorders or other types of eating disorders is the over focus like the constant over focus on food and writing everything down and and looking in my agenda for like 20 minutes a day or something well this is why i'm saying why doesn't she work with a nutritionist that just tells her or a dietitian that tells her, okay, for meal one, have two eggs with a piece of fruit or have two slices of toast with this or something. Like somebody that gives you options and it's just a meal plan you follow. So you don't have to worry and think about calories. Like that would make sense, right? Just like looking at it and constantly like calculating over and over and over again the same calculations of like, are they correct? Am I not making any mistakes? Like, okay, blah, blah, blah. it got really toxic. So one day I just deleted all the, the future amount of calories that I was planning on eating in like the coming weeks. I should have been able to just delete them and I have deleted them. However, I did in the end edit them all up and they are still like, there's still this amount of like uh, 11,000 something on this thing that I have in my kitchen where I, you know, write little things and notes and uh, groceries and stuff like that. So I still know how much calories that I overate this month. There is such a big fear of just wiping the whole thing out and forgetting about like the debt of the calories that I consumed. It's really hard, but that's something that did really help me because instead of like calculating, so I today I want to eat like 500 calories, today I want to eat like 800 calories, and then I can up it to 1200, and then I have to have a lower day again because you know, I want a little bit of speed in the burning of all those calories. It took away the overfocus on food and I was like, I just eat whatever I want to eat. And if there's something left, I'm going to subtract it of the thing that's in my kitchen. She makes it so complicated. She really needs to hire somebody or, or pay for somebody or work with somebody that just tells her what to do with food. So she, that stress is taken away from her. This is the reason why I have a coach, because it's just one less stress for me to worry about. If he tells me to eat this, I eat this, and then it's done. If it's not right, he will fix it. That's the whole point of working with a coach. Um, I think she needs, I'm not saying she needs me, because I don't think I could work with her. She is a far too complex a case for me. She needs to work with an actual specialist, but she needs to work with somebody that just tells her what to do what to eat, and then she doesn't have to worry about it. Simple as that. And I have still been a little bit thinking about restricting. I have not eaten any snacks over the past few days, and so I was able to subtract some more calories. So I am still struggling with it till this day. So it has been a really hard one. It still is, it, it just felt horrible, and I'm happy that I'm, I seem to be out of it. But I'm still, like I said, I'm still restricting a little bit. So yeah, you know, I'm still not doing great. What gave me the power to delete all the stuff on my agenda was the promise to myself that I was like, I am allowing myself to just write the whole debt down on the thing in my kitchen. And I did it in the hope, like, I hope that in the next few days I will have this healthy voice inside my head that says, like, you have binged, there is this debt of, like, 11,000 something calories. Don't punish yourself by keeping on restricting. You know, you are punishing yourself for something that already is a punishment in itself. I have come to realize, like, when I'm in a binge, it's not fun. It's not fun to eat, like, 12,000 calories in one sitting in, like, two hours, maybe three. I mean, try that yourself. That's that's not a fun feeling. Like, it's, it's oh my god, it's, it's horrible. Of course, the first few minutes i didn't even think i could eat 12,000 calories i don't even know if i could eat 12,000 calories in a day it would be a struggle for me to do it over all day but in a couple of hours no way as you do taste the sugar and all the stuff and you are still pretty you're not full and so you are able to enjoy the first few minutes but the other two three hours it's just it's not something that i do because it's fun it's something that i do because i it's something that i learned and that i needed when i was a kid and now i don't need it anymore but it's so it's, it's something that's so deeply engraved in in the way that i cope with things with emotions and struggles that it's really 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 hard to let go of so i can't really say like i had this binge cycle and now it's okay again i'm still struggling like i said i would love to be able to finish this video on like a positive note and i think the only like the positive note is that i feel as if i'm out of it so that's good and that's just how i'm doing and i hope that you can learn from my mistakes at least and um yeah hey Lamp um, so, uh, I just went to the store and this thing is something that I bought, so... Okay, well... I don't have to, like, insert the date in the corner again with it. And I was like, I am going to take you with me to my kitchen and I... Two days since the previous clip. And I was editing just now. I got so sad by watching myself talk...
something that I bought so I don't have to like insert the date in the corner then I can just um or well you can just see what date it is so it has been two days since the previous clip and I was editing just now I got so sad by watching myself talk and wanting to do different but struggling with it and I was like I am going to take you with me to my kitchen and I want to do it together. I want to wipe out, like delete, the calorie debt from this last month to finish this binge cycle. Things are not going to change if... I'm not going to change the things, the things that I do. Yes, I have binged and it sucked. It still sucks. And I don't know what I weigh at this moment. I know that I haven't gained, but I probably haven't lost much either. And that's something that I... Well, I can't imagine she lost much at all, eating that much food. It, it does take up space in my mind. It is, it is a hard thing. But I just want to delete the whole debt. I don't have it in my phone, so it's not that I'm just deleting it and then in secret I'm still going to continue restricting our stuff. I am going to delete it. I wanted to do it together because I want the cycle to break instead of surviving the cycle for the next one to begin. I want to make changes and better myself and that only starts by doing things that I don't like because I don't want to wipe it out. I want to burn every single calorie, but... There's no way she's going to burn those calories. What does she just mean by being, being a deficit? Because she doesn't mean through exercise. We're not going to do that. So I'm going to wipe it out and I want to take you with me. So let's do that. So th Well, that's the best thing she can do in it just to start again. This is where I wrote it down. So I am like 10,315 calories in debt right now. And I want to delete it. I am doing some shining with my phone because, you know, it's pretty dark. But let's delete this and forget about it. And let's just continue. You know, I am on the right path and I have to make changes in order to win from this stupid eating disorder. So let's just wipe it away like that let's just you know start over so the last thing that i wanted to say do you remember this last all right so guys i'm going to end the video here because i've been filming for nearly an hour and my dogs need to go out this video took a bit longer than i expected and so yeah i'm gonna go insert a a calculator emoji and all the cake emojis comment like subscribe dislike the video if you disliked it let me know down below why and i'll see you in the next video bye guys